tired of feeling dizzy, faint, and exhausted all the time? Well, you're not alone. In this video, I'm sharing the secrets to managing POTS naturally, so stick around. Hello, and welcome to this growing community of people who are ready to heal naturally with diet, lifestyle, supplements, and herbs. I'm Carrie Bailey, your functional nutritionist. I work with people with anxiety, depression, and other weird mystery symptoms. Today, we're talking about POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. Did I say that right? <laughs> So likely you've been to one or many doctors if you've had this diagnosis. The cardiologist has checked out your heart and you got a clean bill of health. They might have run, had you wear a heart monitor. They ran all their tests and they say, we can't find anything wrong with your heart. But you know you don't feel well. And this feels like something isn't right in your body, in your heart. The reason they can't find anything wrong with your heart is because it's actually a nervous system issue. It's neurological tachycardia, which is your electrical system. The communication between your brain and your heart is getting derailed. So quick moves with your head, head turns or getting up too fast, either from sitting or from the floor or from bed or a chair can trigger dizziness. Everyone's heart rate increases as they go from you know, on the ground or on the bed to upright, right? But we might, healthy people might increase their heart rate by 10 or 20 beats. But people with POTS, their heart rate's going to go up by 30 or 40 points. So it's really going to feel very strong. Conventional treatments suggest you increasing salts and fluids, which is great. Salt may increase your plasma volume and it might decrease your norepinephrine, noradrenaline, norepinephrine, and it may reduce your orthostatic tachycardia. They might also suggest a low carb diet or B vitamins and definitely removing processed carbs is a good idea. You don't want any processed carbs or refined carbs, no gluten, no dairy, but in effect, your system, your nervous system needs glucose. That's one of the nutrients it needs to heal. It needs fruits. It needs honey. It needs maple syrup and starchy carbs. So potatoes, sweet potatoes, winter squash, these are the best sources of glucose for your body. Your nervous system also needs minerals and electrolytes, and it's going to get those from your vegetables, like spinach, kale, and other leafy greens, and broccoli, all your favorite veggies. So it's important to stay away from fat. Go low or even no fat to heal. This is going to help the glucose and the mineral salts get into the cell where they need to do to support your nervous system, the cells of your nervous system to heal. No bacon and eggs, no corn and soy. If you need more support and you want to know where what to do to get started, check out my anxiety and depression recovery guide in the comments and description below. The principles I share are the same, whether you have anxiety, depression, or other weird mystery symptoms. You'll receive recipes, tips, and tricks to get you started on the journey of healing. Anxiety, depression, and other weird mystery symptoms for good. POTS is often misdiagnosed in conventional medicine. It's either misdiagnosed or it's diagnosed as something psychiatric instead of physical. You might be diagnosed as having low iron. They might give you iron. They might tell you that it's not reversible. You might see these symptoms after COVID. Definitely a common thing. The symptoms of POTS are also associated with uh, mast cell activation syndrome. And usually POTS is worse in the morning. So I had a client who used to feel worse when she would take a shower, whether it was the water or the heat, something triggered her in that shower. It took us a while to unravel this one. But what happens is there's a lot of nerve endings in the head, right? And in POTS, what's happening is the viruses and things in your body are creating inflammation on your nerves. And there's a lot of nerve endings in your head. And so these nerve endings in your head are filled, if you've got a lot of viruses and a lot of pathogens are filled with neurotoxins and a lot of toxins, your, your head is going to be filled with neurotoxins, inflaming those nerves. So they're just really sensitive, right? So just the slightest thing is going to trigger them. So that hitting the shower, hitting the head could be triggering vertigo. You're really sensitive. The symptoms of POTS are going to include dizziness, difficulty exercising, lightheadedness, especially with movement and getting up quickly, fainting, brain fog, nausea, chest pain, blurred vision, racing heart, and unstable blood pressure. Not everybody's POTS are the same. It varies due to the strength of your immune system, how big your viral load, how toxic you are, how toxic your liver is, specifically your liver. There can be blockages in the liver. And again, remember the blood is going through the liver to be filtered. And so if it's getting stuck in there and it's not moving fast enough, the first place after your liver that it's going to go is your heart. And so that's the effects that you're feeling is those blockages in the liver are preventing the blood from getting to your heart fast enough. So other things that can be going on in your liver, you can have adhesions, you can have scar tissue and damage. 
from viruses, things like Epstein-Barr virus can cause actual scar tissue. So the real issue with POTS is that blood flow, right? So not only is it a nervous system issue, it's about getting that blood flow from the liver to the heart. When it can't get there fast enough, it's going to put a huge strain on the heart and the heart's going to have to beat really fast in order to pull that blood in. That's what it's trying to do. It's trying to pull the blood from the liver. So there's a few supplements and lifestyle factors that I recommend to help with POTS. One is L-lysine. L-lysine is amazing for viruses. So it really, it's an amino acid. I've talked about it in other videos. It's going to help because those viruses, the main nerve that's being impacted besides the nerves in your head are the nerves to your vagus nerve, right? The nerves, your vagus nerve travels to your heart. It travels to your liver. And if that gets inflamed, then it can't do its job. And so the L-lysine helps uh, dampen that inflammation. So pure encapsulations make an L-lysine that I really like. It's about 500 milligrams per capsule. And so if you can take, say, two of those um, twice a day, this, it would be sort of my minimum. I don't see a lot of people reacting to lysine, but if you're a person that reacts, definitely start low, go slow. And dosage-wise, you could go up to as much as 2,000 milligrams twice a day if you need to for the L-lysine. Now there's other two nutrients that I like are antivirals. And so, because again, this is a viral, virus is attacking the nervous system, attacking the vagus nerve, and also the messing up your liver. I like lemon balm and I like cat's claw. Lemon balm is great. You can get it in a tea version. You can get traditional medicinals makes a tea. So far I haven't gotten cat's claw in a, a tea version, but I do like tinctures. And so both of those lemon balm and cat's claw, you can also get in tinctures. The tinctures that I like are Vemergy is my number one choice because it doesn't have any alcohol in it. And my number two choice is Hawaii Farm. So Hawaii Farm is great. They do have tinctures with alcohol, but they also have tinctures without alcohol. So I always recommend tinctures without alcohol. Tinctures are great because it lets you titrate and manipulate the dosage a little bit more. But lemon balm tea is pretty um, pretty low dosage. But again, if you're super sensitive, you might react to lemon balm. From a lifestyle standpoint, I like to make sure that you're eating every 45 minutes to an hour. And again, this is to get the glucose, to get the mineral salts that you need from your vegetables into your body, the electrolytes. So by eating every 45 minutes to an hour, again, you're helping. It's, it's more of like electrolyte balance than it is uh, blood sugar balance, if that makes sense. So you basically want to graze, which is not something you hear very often, right? When you're on, if you're on keto or carnivore, you might eat once a day, but this is going to be the opposite. You want to eat more frequently. What this might look like is a banana rolled in hemp seed or celery with sun butter or cucumber slices and apples. So again, I remember I said to kind of go easy on the fat. So sun butter, what would another option be? You could just eat celery and apple would be another option. If you are bed bound, if you are chair bound with POTS, it's important that you move your body as much as possible, even just going to your edge, right? Use those muscles because in the and the nervous system, right? Because if you don't want to atrophy, you don't want to lose those. So constantly just, just the little bits of movement that you can do are going to help you. So you want to retrain your muscles, retrain your body and your nervous system. So in summary, POTS is generally, once you've had your heart checked out, POTS is generally an issue with your nervous system and an issue with a sluggish liver. The way to help that is to bring in more glucose and more mineral salts from fruits and vegetables. You also want to bring in the supplements of L-lysine and the herbs cat's claw and lemon balm. And lastly, the lifestyle factor you want to do is graze all day, eating little bits of fruits and vegetables together all day was the best way to maintain that electrolyte and glucose level. If you like my video, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing so that you can get more of my videos each week as I release them. Thanks so much for being here. See you in the next video.